one more piece next week. Chapter 13, yeah. So we'll have, next week we'll have the quiz and just a review um, for finals. So we will be doing. By the way, this, this class is being recorded because um, I won't be here on Friday, so we're having the same lecture on, on some other class. So just that you're aware of it. Not that you're being recorded. <laughs> but still. Um, Start with prayer. Our Father, we thank you for um, this morning that we're here and with the students as they um, listen about special senses that they may be able to understand it well. Um, help them to prepare well for, well for the finals as well. Um, bless everyone in this class. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. general census, right? Um, we looked at, what did we look at in general census? What census did we talk about? Cicero. And an example would be, um, what? Is, what is the sense we're talking about in general? What kind of senses? Pressure, pressure, pressure. touch, right? We looked at touch, pressure, and all those uh, things. And we, we saw how those, the receptors for those sensors were spread out, right, all over, right, in the dermis. And we looked at how they were in different layers in the dermis and stuff. But now we're looking at these special senses. And those senses are your those five senses that you know, what are they? Smell, smell, smell taste, touch, taste, sight, 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 and vision. Mm -hmm. Now touch is actually a general uh, sense that we looked at before. And they replace that here with balance. Actually hearing and balance goes together, but um, we're looking at balance for this chapter. So special senses are highly organized receptors that provide specific information about the environment. Right, so they're very highly organized. They're not like general senses where you have the receptors in different, you know, all over the place. They are more localized. For example, for hearing, you know, where would you expect to find those receptors? Hearing. The ears. The ears, the ears. right? Um, for taste, where would you find those? Mouth. Mouth, where in the mouth? Tongue. Tongue, right? Yeah, so... That's more localized and specialized mm -hmm. there now. So smell, this is where you have the odor molecules, right, um, that bind to your receptor and we have this stimulation there. Taste, interaction of chemicals as well. Uh, we call them taste ends, like uh, they're the molecules that bind to your receptor, so we call them taste ends. And sight is interaction of light with sensory receptors, right? So, um, you know, vision, how that works. You have this light and you have a wavelength of all these lights, you know, in the visible light realm. So that is your interaction of light. Hearing, interaction of mechanical stimulation with sensory receptors. So this is mechanical stimulation. We looked at how in hearing you have these sound waves, you have vibration, you know, and how you have this movement of the hair in your ear that gives you this uh, sound or hearing ability. Balance, interaction of mechanical stimulation also with sensory receptors. And we'll see how gravity affects that and in balance and um, how we have another way of mechanical stimulation. Very, very similar to hearing balance, and it's also in the same place in your ears. It just differs um, which um, middle ear or inner ear you're talking about when it comes to balance and hearing. Olfaction is the first sense we look at, and it's very, very short. Um, this is the sense of smell, right? Olfaction, the sense of smell. Response to airborne molecules called odorons 
that enter the nasal cavity. Right? So you have to have these molecules or chemicals that have this odor for us to be able to um, smell that. They say there are at least seven primary odor molecules, you know, that exist. Like, you know, there's primary colors or something that you can mix with to get all the other colors, right? So that's what they said. There are seven primary odor molecules that you can mix to get the rest of all the different smells that we get. But this is really not, we have more than seven. It's, they say it's, you know, close to 50 at least. Um, primary odor molecules, but just for simplicity's sake, we look at seven uh, of these uh, odor molecules. First one here is camphoraceous. You can guess where that comes from? Camphoraceous, breaking it down. What kind of smell is that? Camphor, right, camphor tree, right? You know how mothballs smell when you put it in your clothes? So that's the camphor smell. Musky, musky smell, that's kind of like animal stinky smell, <laughs> like skunk have this musky smell. Floral, it's very flowery, right? Peppermint, fresh minty smell. <laughs> Ethereal, this smells like fresh pears, they say. You know how fresh pears have that smell when you cut it? Pungent, stinky, strong odor, right? Mm -hmm. Putrid, kind of like rotten fish or meat or, you know, all this food stuff. And putrid. So these are the seven primary odor molecules that you mix and you get the rest of a lot of different odors. Olfactory neurons have very low thresholds and accommodate rapidly. Very low thresholds. So, um, for example, when we say accommodate rapidly, if you enter into a room from outside and that room has the smell of fish, let's say, <laughs> right? And you enter, as soon as you enter the room, you get the smell. You're like, oh, someone's cooking fish. After a while, though, do you smell that anymore? No, it's just, it's gone. You go out for a while, you come back in, fishy smell, right? It smells. That is what we call accommodation. If we always had the smell working the way, you know, the sexual potential is going on, and you can smell it all the time, I mean, imagine that would be kind of hard on us, right, to be able to smell it all the time. That's why it accommodates, so after a while we get used to the smell and there we don't sense the smell or the odor molecule anymore. Olfactory epithelium and bulb, we're now looking at the nose area here, this is your um, nares, you go through your pores in your nose and this area is your nasal cavity, right, and on top here uh, in the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone, remember the ethmoid bone in your face? Okay, so in there, you have this olfactory bulb, right? We looked at cranial nerves, so remember, uh, actually, did we look at cranial nerves? Yeah. We did? We did. Yeah. yeah. We did. Right, we looked at cranial <laughs> nerves. So this is your olfactory, um, the cranial nerve number, one of it, right? Um, here and you can see how if you zoom into this area, just the nerve there, olfactory bulb, you see all these um, interneurons connecting to your sensory neurons. So you have all these um, uh, bipolar neurons here, down here in your um, epithelium area. So you do have the usual epithelium cells in, in your nasal cavity. And this is where you have these long axons, you know, crossing this area of the connective tissue and the soma, or the body of the neuron, bipolar neuron, is falling in the epithelium. You also have basal cell in this epithelium area of your um, olfactory here. The basal cells are those cells that give rise to new cells when they're dead, you know, when they're gone. But um, this is what we call your bipolar olfactory um, neuron. Olfactory neuron have this dendrite at the end of it, and you can see the dendrites have here, 